Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at Ronnie Bennett. Yay! This is a coronavirus haircut. Is, is it really? Oh, did you... Uh, well, did you... Not, the point is, it has not been cut in quite a long time. Oh, I see. Okay, we well, see, I, I'm getting due for a new one. Well, fine. <laughs> But I've got the clippers now, and Marjorie oh, does... Oh, you can do all that. Okay, I'm not any good at it. I don't know what to do Mar about this. Marjorie does her Delilah routine, you know, and cuts my oh, hair. right, okay. Yeah, oh, you've got someone to do it. Yeah, I don't have anybody to do it. I, I found this is very weird, but I found that a lot of times in my life, the women in my life always wanted to cut my hair. I never wanted to cut your hair. No, you never did. I actually had one woman who was a hairstylist, so I let her do it. But there was, a, a, but Marjorie was all going, "Let me cut your hair. Let me, let me cut your hair." And I'm going, "Keep your hands off my hair." Right? Well, there's not. You have to admit, there's not a whole lot to mess up. Thank you so much for that compliment. <laughs> <I'm> sorry, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, why do you wear a hat? I suppose. Uh, I wear a hat because. I wear a hat. Well, I mean, I wear a hat mainly because I have a fan above me. And if I don't wear the hat, <laughs> the, the air goes into the bags of my eyes and then my eyes start tearing. Is that, is, that, is that reason enough? Hey, you know what I didn't do? I didn't turn on my light so that I looked extra pretty. Look at this. There we go. Oh, oh. wow. I <laughs> forgot to do that today. Sometimes when there's enough light coming in, I, I don't turn on the light, so anyway. So uh, how, how are you doing? Um, I'm very, very slow. I'm getting less well. Let's put it that way. You're getting yeah. less well. Less well. I'm very slow. Um, I, uh, I don't mean slow like I walk so slow. It's just that I have very little energy, and normal things take away the energy. Yeah. So I'm having to juggle what I do when, you know. Um, I, I, I gave up making the bed. I hate walking into a bedroom and seeing an unmade bed. But the COPD is so bad that just making the bed makes me short of breath. Wow. So unless I'm changing the linen, I don't make the bed anymore. <laughs> yeah, I... Uh, I it, 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 Marjorie is the kind that wants the bed made. If if I got up in the middle of the night to take a pee, I could come back and the bed would be made. You know, yeah. one of those hey. deals. Your father used to say that, you yeah. know, about your mother. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but she just has to have. I, I'm lying there, and I, I, you know, you know, you remember me. I used to like to lie in bed for about an hour before I even thought about putting my foot over the edge to get out. I have no recollection of that. I'll just take your word for I it. I think it's because you've wanted to wash the memory of our, our marriage out of your mind. And so you... <laughs> or probably because back in those days before now, I hopped out of bed as soon as I woke up. How would I know you laid there all that time? <laughs> I'll right, tell you a funny story about that. Yeah. A guy I lived with named Barry mm -hmm. um, was a musician. And I worked on early morning talk shows at the time on television. So I had to get up at 4.30 or 5 in the morning. And he didn't get home till 2 in the morning or something. So I was asleep when he got home and he was asleep when I got up. But he had asked that when I leave the house in the morning, would I wake him up and bring him a cup of coffee? Mm -hmm. So I could do that. That's easy. And I would do that every morning. Now, you understand that while I'm in there combing my hair in the bathroom and putting on makeup and everything, I'm listening to the morning news. So I would bring Barry his coffee and I'd say, did you hear what happened and blah, blah, blah. And the president said this and that happened and da, 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 da. And this went on for a long, long time until one day he's sitting there with a cup of coffee and he said, Ronnie, do you think you could keep it down first thing in the morning? <laughs> Well, I just, uh, you know, I mean, I, I like to kind of lounge in bed, you know. If I'm watching the news, I like to lie in bed. It's just, there's a comfort thing with that, right? And she comes in and goes, come on, let's make the bed. And I'm going, I haven't even woken up yet. Let's make the bed. I just like the, I, I don't, what, what, it's not that I like the neatness of it so much, is that I dislike the disarray. You know, it, it makes my mind jumble if, if things are messed up in front of me. 
I think that when I was living alone, I didn't make the bed that often unless somebody was coming over to visit. I just say, why make it? I'm going to get back in it again. Well, it's, I like the look of a nice, neat bedroom, you know, but yeah, I, I'm trading off energy and nice, neat bedrooms now. <laughs> uh, but, but do you think that, that that's a woman thing? Because I don't know guys that care about making the bed that much. No, you know what you learn with with the new, with all of the news people at home. Yeah. Uh, during all of their broadcasts and interviews and things, is you can see who's got messy homes and who's got ones, or at least that they've worked at making them nice and neat in the background. Yeah. <laughs> and some are really quite artistic, and others are just. They shove the books in any way they want. Well, it is fun to see people's homes now. Yeah. You know, and in the middle of maybe an interview or something. Look at the, over the edge. I want to see what's beyond the edge. <laughs> yeah, but but uh, what, what's fun is the guy is talking about politics and blah, 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 and all of a sudden his kid comes into the room, you know. Or, or the dog. Or the, the dog, cat. or the cat, or the cat walks in front of the, uh, of the, uh, <laughs> the camera, you know. Um, it's the new normal. How, yes. How are things going up there in uh, in Lake Oswego? I mean, uh, have you had any rise or spike in uh, in cases and things like that? Oregon is doing very well. It's going up very, very, very slowly. Mm -hmm. But you have to remember, we also have a lot less people in the big cities where the big numbers are. Mm -hmm. And. Um, and yeah, you know, I I haven't watched. I haven't looked closely, but supposedly they're loosening some of the restrictions now which i think is anywhere in the united states is stupid but you know you're not going to get it stopped um and uh and and so i mean compared to most other places oregon has only had like 150 or so a little bit more than that maybe deaths wow yeah, that, that that was that would have been a, we we would have thought that was a great one day total for us here in New York. Exactly. You know, yeah. We, um, so we, it's... We, we've gone from about eight hundred a day, mm -hmm. okay, down to at least in New York City yesterday, three people died, and the day before it was zero. Um, it was much higher than eight hundred. I watch these numbers every day. Really, I thought I think at one point it seemed to be 800, but it might have been higher than that. The fact is, though, that we took that curve, and it wasn't a question of flattening it; we bent it. We just took it down to the very bottom. And um, I'm proud of New Yorkers. You know, New Yorkers can get it done when they want to. Well, wait till we see what happens in two weeks. Well, I don't know that it's going to be that terrible. Uh, the reason being that when we bent the curve, also the number of people coming down with it, and that uh, right now, when they do all these tests, and they do 50,000 of them a day in New York State, uh, I think we're down to 2% of the tests come out positive. So now you got all these people out there marching, and only 2% of them maybe are positive. Let's just say that as an argument. I'm, I'm smiling about you and and so many other amateurs that are telling us what's going on. I'm I'm sorry, well, but you I'm, don't I'm, know. I'm sorry. Uh, you don't remember. I am a healthcare professional. Do you remember that? I am a healthcare professional. Because whenever I said, "Does this look infected to you?" I'm a healthcare professional. Oh, then I did I misunderstand when you asked me every single day if this was serious or not, whatever this was any given day? Well, every day, every day I asked you, does, do you think this is cancer? And eventually it was. So... <laughs> <laughs> was 50 years later. <laughs> 50 years later, eventually it was. Uh, but, I mean, just, you know... Um, um, uh, I, I, uh, it, it, what, what they're saying is they don't know. The governor doesn't know. But the governor has said, if you were in one of those demonstrations, go out and get a test. Just get a test. And also try and stay away from your grandmother for 14 days. All right? Just do them a favor. But let's see what happens. Uh, and uh, I, they, they, he, the theory is that because our numbers are so low, the chance of spread is less. Okay? 
in spite of the demonstrations, which people were, because they were all wearing masks too, if you noticed. Yeah, I'll take a look at those pictures, half or not. No, in some of the other cities, in New York City, they were wearing masks. I mean, this was, this is Mask City. I mean, yeah, the, I see clusters of people without masks and I go, what, do you want to die? Well, what's your problem here? You know, but most people in New York City are, are very good at wearing masks. I mean, uh, uh, so I, uh, you know, New Yorkers grab the bull by the horns. You know. But, you know, the pollen count is up, so you don't know what's pollen and what's coronavirus anymore, you know, because you call. I know and, about that. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 my constant question is it is it cancer COPD or old age? <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean, your COPD is that affected by pollen? I'm sure it is. No, no, no. no. Really? I have no pollen problems. Never have had. Oh. But, um, but you know, making the bed means I'm heaving for air. I can't really make the bed without. In the, however long it takes to make a bed, I probably have to sit down and rest for a couple of minutes two or three times. Yeah. Well, now, you know, uh, in case people don't know, Ronnie has cancer. All right? Just just say it outright rather than parse it in. She's, I do. She's ill. Uh, you know, she's got cancer. But she's also got COPD. So my question is, what's worse right now, your COPD or your cancer? It's not a matter of that. There's no comparison. They're both bad. They're both bad. But you, mm -hmm. you, you kind of look like you're doing okay today. You're, you're. Oh well, you know, for the for up until about whenever March was. How long ago was March? Um, up until then, after I recovered from the surgery in 2017, um, I had no pain. Period. Mm -hmm. None. A year ago, I had to stop chemotherapy because it was doing terrible things to me besides what it was supposed to do. And the cancer has grown like crazy. And I'm now what they call eligible for hospice, which is a euphemism for you don't have long to live, lady. Um, and, uh, and I have since March, um, body pains they're just all around my body in different places all the time and it's not like screaming pain it's just it's the kind of constant pain that just just wears you down yeah you know yeah and over-the-counter medications do take care of it although it takes an hour or two for them to kick in uh and of course you know advil and those kind of drugs have warnings that you shouldn't take them for longer than two weeks or more than twice a day or whatever the, the recommendations are. I don't care anymore. <laughs> you know? I mean, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, like, tell me it's going to kill me. You I'm know? not going to worry about my liver at this point. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if I live, which you probably won't, but if I live, I'll worry about my liver then. <laughs> yeah, I just, I'm pleased. <laughs> it's not my biggest problem. Yeah. Although I, I do have to say, and I don't want an answer to this, by the way, of if something happens to my liver as a result of the over-the-counter pain medication, how does it manifest itself? What one more thing would I have to live with? <laughs> right. Right. Don't they, can they do, they can do liver transplants, can't they? I don't think they do it on people with COPD and they, cancer. I, I think they do kidney <laughs> transplants, but they would say, you know, don't waste the money. <laughs> you know? It's, uh, I think, I think that it's, uh, that, that that's not a place to put their efforts, you know, and I'm 79 years old. So, you know, I've lived a good long while. I don't have any complaints. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, if I were to go tomorrow, I guess I would say, I wouldn't say anything because I wouldn't know. Uh, but if I were to go tomorrow, I'd say, you know, I've lived a longer life than other people have. But I don't intend to go. I'm not never going. I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Uh, you're the one immortal? I, I'm immortal. Yeah. Yeah. I used to believe that about myself, too. <laughs> you're going to die, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you know, I mean, I, uh, um, I, you know, I, 
when I got the, the prostate cancer, I said to the uh, oncologist, um, is this the thing that's going to kill me? And he looked at me with a snarky look and went, no. <laughs> yeah, he well, said, it'll be know. something else first. I said, that's good to know. Have any idea what it might be? You know? Did you really want to know? Was that a serious question? Well, it would have helped, you know. Uh, I, you know, I, it, 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 what was, what was, uh, somebody said, uh, if, would you want to know what, when you were going to die or oh, I can't remember what it was and it was a very funny remark. Um, but the fact is that, you know, in your case, look at you, you got pancreatic cancer. I wrote you off. I said, well, you know, I know people. So did I. <laughs> I, had, I had several friends who've had pancreatic cancer, and within six months, they were gone. Mm -hmm. And how many years is it now since? From diagnosis, it's three years, but I knew something was seriously wrong with me for six or seven months before they found it. Oh, yes, you're right. I remember that you went from doctor to doctor, and they went, oh, we'll take some Advil or something. You yeah. Know? They, they, it, it, it's probably a disease that masks itself in a lot well, of ways. What happens is, well, you can't see it, I'm, but, I'm, but it's, it's kind of tucked behind your liver, the pancreas, Yeah. and there's no test to diagnose it. They have to feel it. And it's very hard because as most of it is tucked behind the liver. So it's very difficult to diagnose. That's one of the biggest. That's why 90% of people die within a year of diagnosis because they're di we're diagnosed so late, it's already gone so far, there's not much to do. Is there such a thing as if they do find it early enough that they can take care of it? Well, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg had pancreatic cancer 30 or 40 years ago. 30 or 40 years ago? Yeah. And they caught it early, I would imagine. It was They didn't do surgery because it was so early. What did they do, radiation on her? I, I don't know the details of someone else's treatment, but... Well, you know, I, 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 she, she's so old in those days, they rattled bones, I think. Oh, that's not nice. That's, she's <laughs> wonderful. She's I my know. hero. She's everybody's hero. I mean, maybe not Trump's, but she's everybody's hero. This speaking is, of Trump. Yeah. Oh, speaking. Here we go. Okay. Talk about the devil. Go ahead. By the all way. All the things we could all list that Trump has done, whether they were awful or stupid or terrifying, the one that just sent me round the bend was him standing there with a frown on his face holding the Bible, just standing there. And it was upside down, by the way. It was upside down. Well, that's what everybody says. I look at the video and I can't tell it's upside well, down. Well, the reason but is... That is the... even, doesn't even matter. Uh, it's just stupid. And and I don't... I'm, and you know what else? You know, all the hullabaloo and back and forth with Bill Barr and the president and everything yeah. about how they got rid of the demonstrators so he could have his little Bible walk. Is Did you see the helicopter that was way low and trying to chase people away, Yeah, it had a red cross on its belly. You're not supposed to use that by Geneva Convention with the whole world unless it's on a building, a person, or a vehicle that is a humanitarian worker. They weren't doing humanitarian work. They were no. trying to get people out of the way. That's not the same thing. And did you see how low that helicopter That's was? What I mean. That's how they were doing it. It looked like it was they almost going to hit branches off trees. They were so low, it, it blew branches off trees. Wow. But a Red Cross helicopter? Because he wants to take a walk, a Bible walk? Oh, the reason you could tell it was upside down is, you know that little ribbon that they have in Bible yeah, so you can mark the spot? Bottom. It was on the bottom. It's supposed to be on the top. No, it's not. It's supposed to be on the bottom. No, it's supposed to come out the bottom. Yes. I, I have a bunch of books with those ribbons. He looked they, at, he looked, at one point, he looked at it, and he noticed that it was upside down, and he turned it right side up. It doesn't matter. I it, mean, the whole thing was so stupid. I, I don't even I, know. I was thinking about terrible photo ops, okay? And I put this one in with Kerry, and who was the short guy who ran for president wait, wait, in the wait, tank? Wait, what about Kerry? Windsurfing. It was a terrible photo op. 
Yeah, I never understood why it was so terrible. Uh, I guess because we were told it was. Uh, and then the, you had the what's his name in the tank. Um, uh, oh, the guy from Massachusetts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I can't make his name come to mind. Yeah, he 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 was definitely. Uh, yeah, uh, that that's that, you're right. That's up there. I don't. I never understood the objection to the Carrie photo, but. <laughs> but I remember, um, no, why won't his name the come second, to the, the other worst of photo op was another <laughs> Trump photo op, which was him coming down the escalator. He just looked goofy, you know. Oh, I don't, that was so long ago, I don't even, it's not even part of, part of the. That was ages ago when we actually thought Trump wasn't, when, when we said, well, if he becomes president, we don't, who knows, he might do a good job. He might. That. Well, no, I mean, I, I always say that about I always say that about anybody that you know we don't we can't prejudge that easily, you know. You said that. I don't know. I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you admit it. <laughs> well, I mean, the night he was elected, I I went into to Marjorie and I said to her, uh, she said, well, well, what what happened? And I said, Trump is president. And she said, oh, my God. <laughs> I said, well, you know, you never know. He might surprise us. I never said that. Never thought that. Well, I, I, I want to think the best in moments like that, not the worst. But my, you know, my, I, but my, my line was nobody could fuck up this country enough in four years uh, to, to, be, to, to do any kind of permanent damage. And I was wrong. Yeah, you were. I was really, really wrong. Yeah, you know, I'm feeling more and more that I, I'm i going to be really sorry that I don't, if I don't make it to the election and find out who won. Well, you better make it to the election because I want you around. You know, I want you around forever. Well, yeah, that's not going to be, but... Uh, but I just, I just want to know after all of this, what's going to happen? Because, um, you know, the numbers all look good, but um, it's a long time. It's still six months until the election. Lots, of, as we well know now, if we never knew before, how much can happen in six months with this president? Well, I mean, this is a president that he's already set it up that if he loses, he's going to say it, uh, it's uh, wrong and he's going to sue and he's going to try and prevent from being taken out of office. That we're going to have to take him out of there with, I guess, a police cordon to get him to leave the White House. Um, I don't think it's going to I don't think it's going to be that easy. If Biden wins, he's going to say, well, it was all those mail in ballots. It's a fix and blah, 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 blah. And I want it investigated and blah, blah. He's not going to leave easily, even if he loses. What's interesting to watch right now is that as of today, very few, but some prominent in office, not retired or other, you know, or gone on to something else, um, people in Congress, Republicans, mm -hmm. are stepping way back from him and saying it out loud. Well, uh, they're beginning to feel that he could ruin the Republican Party for many, many years. Oh, I think they're far more concerned about whether they get elected or not than that. <laughs> well, you know, I, I think you're going to start seeing a lot of defections in the Republican Party. I think the man has gotten unhinged, and they know that, and they, while they won't admit it publicly, privately, they're going, I can't back this guy. You know, I just can't. Did you see the stuff this morning? Remember the guy in Buffalo, the police, the 75-year-old yes, that yes, the police yes. shot to the ground and he's yes. still in the hospital? Yes. Just this morning, I have to read this stuff because I don't follow anybody's tweets, let alone the president. But as of this morning, Trump had said that he, there's something about a setup and he, he was, was an He anti was Antifa plant. and it's a setup and... He, he he was pushed lightly and, and, and hit the ground lightly or something like that. Uh, I'm, in fact, I'm going to play, right when we're through with this, I'm going to play Cuomo's response to that today, in which he took Trump to the woodshed like you wouldn't believe for that <laughs> comment. Saying, yeah, so did a lot of people online just before we got how, started how, on He this. said, how cruel can you be? 
You know, yeah. but, but uh, I'll play it for the people, and they'll, uh, I'm going to play it tonight, and they'll know why. But anyway, hey, listen, uh, you know what? Uh, we have we, time. We, we, we're out of time. Well, that has a whole new meaning to me these well, days. Well, uh, <laughs> no, and I don't mean that in any way to upset you. Uh, it's okay. Yeah. It's all right. Listen, I'm running, I'm, run, I'm running out of time, too. So, you know, we all have expiration dates. Hey, I love you, dear, and it's always great talking to you, and it's always great looking at timegoesby.net, which is your blog. You've been doing it for years, and it's a great service to the seniors in our country, and it should be read by everybody. <laughs> Thank you. And I love you dearly, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks, okay? Take good care. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Ronnie Bennett.